Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Laura Canfield Show, the Awaken to Happiness Now Global Series. Thank you so much for being here with us today. And I'm so glad that my good friend Elizabeth Wood is back with us. She was here, I think, in January uh, earlier this year. Um, and we always have such a wonderful conversation, wonderful processes. And I know you all love uh, talking to Elizabeth. So we are going to be taking some live color questions and we're going to be doing some processes and so on. And today we're talking about how to become a human of light. Um, and so part of that is like, you know, what's happening in the human evolution. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about simple steps to accrue and radiate more light now. What's coming in the near future that we need to prepare for and how to reclaim the temple of light, the DNA. So we're going to talk about all of that and more. Always so much fun. Always a high vibe call. So I do suggest you grab some water. That'd be handy. Um, and for those of you who don't know Elizabeth, she is considered an advanced seer. She works on the cutting edge of galactic and quantum anthropology, trauma healing, and futurism. And with her lifelong ability to see into and work with all dimensions, her theoretical and psychic work has helped people all over the world. Called the Living Library and Oracle, Elizabeth has spent her whole life studying anthropological theory, quantum physics, ancient and modern medicine. She has two science degrees, including a master's in applied anthropology. And her philosophies and practices bridge science and spirituality to support real change in the world. And real change begins with you. So we're going to be, that's what we're talking about, how to become a human of light, right? Transformation within, within you, change for you and how that then automatically reflects out into the world. So Elizabeth, <laughs> I'm so glad you're here, back in Ecuador, back home, right? Feeling good and healthy. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh, thank you. I'm glad to be here too. And just to see everybody, it's really nice to be on your show as always. Thank you. So I know that, you know, like, I know we just talked in January, feels, but it feels like a lifetime ago, as you know, all the stuff going on in my life. So, so you know, like, Time is going by so fast, so, so fast. And I know you've been going through your own challenges and things in your life. So let's, can we start off just really quickly talking about what is going on right now in the, yeah, the, in the collective? <laughs> what the heck's happened? Yeah. Something pretty interesting just happened. And, you know, we, we've we been trying to trudge along over the past several months. Uh, you know, a lot of different changes have occurred since January, obviously. And, you know, the, the difficulty of shifting the personal self out of the way to experience the universal self every day and all the time, it's only become more and more clear that not only is that necessary, it is the way for us to survive as human beings but it's not been that much easier to accomplish. Even though the earth and consciousness have become more formless, it seems like all the structure of the ego and the personal self and the trauma is even heavier than before. So I had this vision the other day that perfectly summed it up. Now, many of you may or may not know that I don't drive. I'm like basically too psychic to drive. Uh, I know that sounds weird, but, you know, if you see 12 dimensions all the time, driving a car doesn't work. And yet, in my vision, I was driving a car. <laughs> so I'm driving this car, and I'm like, this car is like the oldest, craziest looking car. And it's so heavy. It was, it was one of those really old cars that you could, like, literally throw a hammer at it, and it wouldn't do anything. Like it was as if it was made out of cast iron. That's how old this car was. Well, it breaks down in the vision. And I'm like, well, this isn't going to work. So I get out of the car and I'm looking at it. And I have no idea what I'm looking at. And I'm kicking the car wheel. I'm like, come on, man. <laughs> like, can't we just keep going? I'm, I, I, there was some momentum. And now you just stopped you know what what am I supposed to do and in this vision slash meditation I start getting really angry and that's like the one emotion I avoid the most that's like deeply held deep in my gut so here's a little hint if you have a pooch in your tummy there's a lot of emotion stored there 
for me, it's grief and anger, mm -hmm. but the, the, you know, the anger's underneath it. Cause that's the one I really don't want to touch. So the grief, I can handle grief, <laughs> but anger, oh boy, it was coming up big time. So I'm just noticing it, letting it move through. This is a technique. Even in the vision, I'm like following the techniques. So that's great. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I'm really, really mad right now. And then I'm like, well, what do I do? I'm out in the middle of nowhere. I'm looking around and I'm, I'm like in the Great Plains. There's nobody coming. Okay. Maybe never. <laughs> and there is nothing to see. There is not one building. It's just spaciousness. And I'm it, and it's hot. And I'm like, this, this is terrible. I am stuck. I feel stuck right now. So I'm like, well, I could lay in the grass and I could merge with the car, I guess. Or I could merge with the whole universe and I guess. But I feel like I'm not really going anywhere. Like, I, like maybe I should just start walking. Maybe if I walk, I'll see something. And I'm like, no, that's not it either. So I finally figured out what this car was. <laughs> and it's these things. It's trauma. Mm -hmm. It's cast iron level, hardcore, old. And it's not going anywhere. It broke. It broke. My ego broke. <laughs> my, nice. my trauma. My trauma is my ego that I've been riding along. I've been on this joy ride. I've been riding along and, and I think I was enjoying it. I think I was enjoying my ego. Mm -hmm. And and suddenly I'm not anymore. Now I'm mad. So this anger was disturbing me because it was taking over my day. And so I connect with my teacher and I said, hey. I'm like so mad, like, what am I missing? And she's like, you, you keep trying to move into the highest dimensions that are available now. And that, and this is the change that happened. And it's so different now that none of us, not even me, nobody on this planet has clocked what has just happened. Mm -hmm. And she's like, you're, you keep trying to move into formlessness and you're drugged back into form. Yeah. and density and structure and trauma and this stuff that's pissing you off and now you're mad at your own ego and you keep doing this back and forth thing and she, and I'm like she's like what are you resisting because if you have an issue it's because you're resisting something <laughs> most of the time and I said well I'm resisting formlessness she's like no you're not you're trying to go into formlessness. You want to stay in formlessness. What are you resisting? And I'm like, oh boy, trying to look at yourself is so hard. It really is. I'm terrible at it. And most people are, and that it's kind of a built-in system. It's on purpose. You're really not supposed to see yourself very well because <laughs> eventually when you're seen truly by somebody, you begin to realize that it's you seeing you mm -hmm. through their eyes that you're not separate from them. So I'm like, okay, just tell me, what am I resisting? She's like, you're resisting the movement, the back and forth from form and structure and trauma mm -hmm. and this dense crap in this car that you don't want to be in anymore. You're resisting that movement between being in the car and being outside of the car and free. That's what is happening to everybody right now. <laughs> but it was, it was, the car got switched off. By what? Exactly. By who? Yeah. Who? Well, it wasn't me. <laughs> in the vision, in the vision, the, it, it is me, but it's not. Yeah. In the vision, the car broke it just stopped working like out of nowhere it just stopped and you know that's terrifying when you're going along at 70 miles an hour or whatever and it just stops working in the middle of nowhere well that was the thing that just happened to all of us the structure the way that the car was working ended it stopped it, it's for all of us so yeah. if you're pissed off right now or maybe you're really sad or maybe you're really confused 
this is normal. This you, you're not wrong in these feelings. It's not wrong for us to feel these feelings at all. In fact, I want you to notice it and embrace it and let yourself feel it. Let it move through you. Anger burns for me. So I let it move through. It burns. Mm -hmm. But then what? What do we do? Well, we need to get oriented. We need to figure out where we are. No one has figured it out yet because we. this has literally never happened to anybody on the planet. So you yourself are cutting edge. You don't have to be a mystic or be good at any of this. You are cutting edge because you exist here right now. So when summer solstice happened, something that I never thought would happen occurred. And of course, Earth takes us by surprise on purpose, you know, like a good mother should mm -hmm. right? to surprise her kids with these beautiful gifts. Now, we're still unwrapping this gift. We still don't know what it is yet. It's got a lot of wrapper around it. We're going through it. It might be in several layers of boxes, probably. It's going to be one of those gifts that, yeah. that's actually this big, but it's in a box this big. So... You know, we're unwrapping this and Mother Earth and the universe and, of course, our souls who are so expert at navigating consciousness have created this situation. What is this gift? Well, I'll, I'll give you a hint. I know what it I know what it is through this hint. I shook the box. <laughs> I'll give you a hint. It's the last triad of the dimensions. The dimensions of consciousness, which are different than mathematical physics dimensions. We could talk about that, but that's not going to get you where you need to go. Mm -hmm. Dimensions of consciousness comes from spiritual science, mysticism. The last triad is the 10th and 11th and 12th dimensions. They are the most formless and they are the most still you don't move. When you get to the 12th dimension, it is the immovability of source that arises. The last polarity, movement versus stillness. Mm -hmm. The last polarity of existence, of consciousness, movement versus stillness. That's where we're at. This just opened up. I didn't ever think that was going to happen because it actually takes a lot of effort and an incredible amount of skill to merge with those last three dimensions. And you're, you can't go forward into them. You have to back into them. You have to back up. You have to fall backwards into these highest dimensions. That's the trick to merging with them is you stop viewing reality from inside the car. Mm -hmm. Your car just got broke down on purpose. Now you are being forced to step outside the car. Anything that is coming up right now is brand new in consciousness. We're in a brand new place in space, very literally, while still going through these massive cycles. But now consciousness is so different that we're still trying to peel the wrappers off. Mm -hmm. But that gives you a clue as to where we are now, what just happened in consciousness and where we're going to be going. That means that you no longer need to worry about this question, who am I? It's going to get revealed every single moment from here. Mm -hmm. And it may not be, you know, super easy or pleasant. It hasn't been at all so far. <laughs> I've been like super mad for about two weeks straight. Um, but that is key. Let yourself experience this because there's lots of other people out there who are sad or mad or frustrated or confused. Mm -hmm. And this is normal because we're evolving into a whole other species, homo luminous. We can't do it while we're in that car. Right. We're going to have to do it in a whole new way. In fact, I'm assuming that the road, the whole situation, the whole momentum, the journey itself is gonna dissolve entirely. It's gonna turn off. The experiment in consciousness last December 
during the solstice turned off. But that was the surrounding experiment. Mm -hmm. And now it's trickled down to you and your car. And your car just got shut off. Mm -hmm. I feel that. So that's what I'm perceiving, Alara. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's partly exciting, but it's partly scary. And there's a lot of confusion, like you said, and there's a lot of intensity. I also feel like all of our deep fears that we've, you know, been holding on to have hidden, they're coming up as well. You know, and, and part of that is like, we have to get real with ourselves. We have to really get real with ourselves and see what we've been hiding from ourselves and everybody else so that, you know, we can move through them. Like you said, for you, it's the, it's the anger you've been holding on to. It's like, I'm not going to feel that. Right. But the thing is, it's like all the, all the fears that we have, the reason why we have them is for us to experience them to their fullest and then let them go or transcend through them. Right. Oh yeah. So here's the cool part. The tools are there. You know, someone used the word, uh, how do you sustain your evolution? I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> There's a framework you might sustain, but evolution is not yeah. something you can sustain. Evolution is mm -hmm. going to happen. Yeah. Whether you are trying to sustain it or not, you don't sustain that you sustain your framework that keeps the momentum of change going. So even though I'm outside the car now and I'm realizing, you know, the first thing up in my face that I got to deal with is my anger. Mm -hmm. um, okay, great. I'm going to still use that same set of tools. And the first one is to notice it first and say, all right, but how does this really feel in my body? I might say I'm angry, but how does it really feel in my body? Mm -hmm. That's the first step. And then to welcome it because I need to feel this. I need to go through the layers that are trapped in me. Right. And as I do this, and this is the answer to where we're at, this is, this is how we're going to utilize this situation from here and where we're going. Cause I do have a glimpse of it. Although we don't know exactly what that package is going to really give. I, I assume that with that level of formlessness and light, you know, this is why many of the mystics lately have been saying the light is coming. It's coming. And it's not just spiritual light. It's physical light, too. Um, but they can feel it, that it's coming. And so, you know, we, we go in, we welcome this full body welcoming. And what does that do? It unwraps the density of the anger or the sadness, the confusion, the overwhelm. Overwhelm's a big piece. People mm -hmm. don't know what to process. Process being overwhelmed first. Yeah. And then no. Um, so what do you do to process? You welcome it. You notice it in your body. Your body is going to help you do this. This is what the body is here for. And this is the reclaiming of the temple of light, your DNA. So you're going in and you're saying, all right, DNA, you're troubled by anger. I'm going to welcome it. I'm going to let it burn through me. And as it dissolves, you get more clarity. Your mind, your heart, and your gut become more clear on discerning the next step. And then you can say, all right, now what? Well, as you do this, you're going to start to sense that you're going to get pulled. You're going to feel pulled. You're going to feel movement like I was talking to you about. Movement. Be willing to move into something dense or into something light, whatever's in front of you. And it's moment by moment at this point. That's how fast everything's happening. Well, as you get pulled, you're getting pulled actually into a connective space that I would say is literally the real internet. And we have been very disconnected from it. That really clunky car kind of cut you off from reality and now you don't have a choice because you can't use the car to move forward anymore a lot of people may get stuck sitting in that car for a while have compassion for them they just don't realize they need to get out yeah um and so as we get out and we're doing this processing of whatever's in front of us the most intense thing in front of you overwhelm anger as you do that, you're going to get clear on, all right, now I need to walk. That's why I thought I need to do something. I can't just sit here. This isn't going to work. 
But as I envisioned myself walking forward on this road, the road and the whole scene just disappear into light. That's because you're headed towards something that we call new earth. But new earth isn't a place. Mm -hmm. Everybody thinks new earth is like the splitting of the world. And here's going to be us in this really nice special place. And then everybody (laughs) else in the 3D being mad in the car, right? That's not real. They didn't separate. There is the false light that's very, very structured and heavy. But there is also real light. And as you perceive that all of this is happening, you're going to start to have a lot of different things come online. All these beautiful people over the past six months have been calling me and saying, Elizabeth, I'm now seeing things and feeling things that I couldn't before. I'm so, I'm extra confused now because now I'm, now all this stuff's happening and maybe I feel more attacked than ever before. I feel, I feel like I don't know what to do with being human anymore. Good. Because you're not going to be a homo sapien anymore. That's not what you're being asked to do. You came here and you ended up in this life because this was the end all be all life that you've been working your butt off for. You're either brand new and you worked really, really hard to get here now or you're super old or ancient even, and you work really extra hard to get here now. But anybody who's human right now, they made it to the forbidden part of the library. And that forbidden part of the library gives you a chance to reconcile all the polarities. Finally, for all time, for all humankind, in order to step forth into being new earth. You are new earth. You are the human of light that suddenly, literally, creates new earth. I'm talking about a very swift change Mm -hmm. that's coming. When exactly is this going to come? I'm not really sure, but I believe that it has to do with the great cycles of the sun and the galaxy. And that there's no doubt in my mind that we are here for that very important 13,000 year cycle. Mm-hmm. that offers a huge outflux of radiant light from the sun literally perhaps we call it a mini nova right beyond a next flare and and all of us have been feeling the sun mm-hmm. this is this is a real thing it's a scientifically measurable thing that that the sun affects human beings very dramatically and so you know you're being asked to step into this moment in time where we can become something entirely new. But for now, just get out of the car and (laughs) and start walking and notice whatever's in front of you and notice as you get to this more formless place that's so light, there's nothing to see. You see, I've navigated reality with my third eye up till now, and I'm getting used to realizing that in the very highest dimensions, there's nothing to see. And I'm getting used to not seeing, which is actually glorious for me because I've craved that my whole life to just not see for a little while. Mm. But the, the light, the light is what you can see. The light is what you can feel. And it dissolves you. It dissolves everything. And it changes you from the inside out. And it changes your reality. It changes the structures of humankind. It's going to change the earth. It's going to change our cultures. And in that space is everyone here on this call. Mm -hmm. You're not alone. This isn't strange. This is not abnormal. This is exactly what you signed up for. We're here now to be New Earth. New Earth is a cultural concept that we will create. We're going to decide on that. It's not time yet to define all of those factors and how those systems are going to work. No, you need to just get there first. (laughs) You, just you, worry about that from the inside out. Don't worry about your family or your kids or these people who did these things that I don't agree with or these folks who I'm related to who don't agree with me, right? Don't worry about them. 
they're still in their cars or they're getting out of their car or they're in some sort of shift there. Right now, you get out of your car, mm -hmm. get out, get out of it. It's done. It's not useful. It can't go anymore. Can't take you where you were going before. In fact, where you were going before just disappeared. And that's what I'm noticing. And how, how do, how do we get there? We, yeah. You, you got to give in to this. <laughs> Keep going. You're on the right track. So it might be a little bit scary for some people not understanding how to even get out of the car, right? How do you even know when it's time to get out of the car and which direction do you take the next step in? Yeah. I'm just, you know, I'm just thinking out loud. It's like, yeah, that's what <laughs> my mind would go there. It's like, I don't know where to go. Good. I love that. Let's just keep it really simple. So let me go back to my vision that I had, right? That I got thrown into. Um, and source works like that. Source is going to give you like these really strange metaphors. And you're like, seriously, <laughs> I don't even drive. So the car, you know, again, is, is structure. It's trauma. It's ego. It's expectations. It's cultural conditioning. That's what the car is. Mm -hmm. And at some point when you're not going forward anymore in your life and things aren't changing or evolving, there's no momentum, there's no inspiration, it's just dense, it's ugly, it's messy, it's smelly, you're over it and you can't keep going. There's no go anymore. Yeah. That's when you say enough. That's the moment you get out of the car. Mm -hmm. When you're finally sick and tired of the lack of momentum, the heaviness, the misery, and you say, enough, there's got to be something else than this. And it actually kind of falls quite nicely into a logical pattern. Somebody will be like, well, hang on a second. Where the heck am I? Right? They'll ask the where question. Where am I? Mm -hmm. What am I doing with my life? How do I fix this? The first three questions, where, what, and how? And so then they start searching, right? For a way to be done with the trash bags, for a way to be done with the broken car issue. They, they start searching. That's when you get out of the car. You're like, no, no, I'm done with this. This is not gonna work anymore. I'm gonna end up dying. I'm gonna end up getting sick or I'm gonna end up miserable for the rest of my life. I can't do this anymore. Yeah. And then they get out and then they say, why did it happen like this? So they, they look for tools to help them figure out how to be finished. And they're also looking for, well, why did it get like this? Because eventually if you have a reprieve enough, you will ask that question. <laughs> Why is the universe like this? It's so weird. Or this is over dramatic, man. Why did it end up like this? So they start asking for the real history of reality. They start searching reality for clues about what's, what's true, right? You start beginning to look for truth. And then you end up finally asking the question, wait a minute, who am I? Because as you start to actually figure out the how and the why, it begins to become clear. Oh boy, you're not exactly who you thought you were. So who are you? And that's where we will live from here as we move into this place in, in time and space, this new earth experience that we were being asked to embody and be a human of light. You're gonna live in those questions. Mm -hmm. Who am I? How did it get like this? And who am I? What role did I play to make all this happen? Because you're not just suffering and and a victim of it in fact when you really get to the bottom of it you're going to find out that you are the creator of it mm -hmm. and then it gets really interesting and then you start having visions like that <laughs> awesome 
And yeah, and I think a lot of people are experiencing this right now. I think a lot of people are are questioning, you know, where they are, who are they, what's going on. And also it's like, all right, I need to change this. And this needs to change. I need to change this. And then it's like, okay, which direction am I going? It's like, wh which way am I going? And again, like that's what I'm saying. It's like, it's like, you know, when you get out of the car, it's like, all right, I, I've gotten out of the car. I had to get out of the car. So it's like, okay, cool. And now, whew, what's next? And then it's kind of also, it's about being comfortable in that space just getting out of the car and being comfortable in that space, you know, getting outside of the car, looking around, getting comfortable there. And then you can, it, it, I think it will, it, it will organically come to you, which direction to take, which step to take, which, you know, which way to go and when it's yeah, time to go, you know? Yeah. yeah. And, I, and, and I notice, you know, everybody's feeling very overwhelmed. Me yeah. too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> process that first, welcome the overwhelm first. Cause when you get out of the car, you know, when you're inside of a car, People, you know, you have your own little world. You feel quite safe. And when you step outside the car and you're on the road, you don't feel that way anymore. So that whole sense of safety, even though it wasn't ideal whatsoever, or even really healthy or real, <laughs> um, that goes. So that sense of safety is going to drop quite yeah. quickly. And you're going to feel overwhelmed because your body's going to kick in. It's probably kicked in since solstice or the past six months or even the past several years as we've been entering into more farmless places in space and more higher dimensions. Your sense of protection and safety are going to kick in and you're going to feel overwhelmed. So when you notice overwhelm, it's going to be kind of big. It takes over the whole body. And if you just welcome it and don't resist it, it tends to move through you. And then the next set of things in order, okay, I need to get out of bed right now. All right, I need to make sure my kids are dressed and their teeth are brushed. I have, you know, I have a 3D household. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Today's my, wedding, today's my wedding anniversary. Oh, um, happy anniversary. You know, I just want to show you that you can still be this high level of a thinker and a mystic and navigating reality as your authentic self and still have a 3D life. Yeah, and absolutely. Yeah. Right? So um, the, the next steps, whether they be very basic self-care or family care or household care, come nicely in order and then you'll feel moments of overwhelm again where it's like wow really is there gonna be like crazy stuff happening it's like the financial system's breaking down are you are you serious uh you know what are we gonna do all that is overwhelming mm -hmm. and especially for those of, of those folks out there who weren't given the tools to prepare for such a crumbling mess. Um, oh, you know, global news and all the possible wars on it that are, might happen every day. Very overwhelming, very real, yet not that real. Because what's really going on? Your attention's getting drawn out of you. Mm -hmm. And this is a key step. Whenever your attention gets drawn out for, st for stuff outside of you, the global stage, the politics, the economics, the collapsed building and all those poor people, you know, whatever might be drawing your attention, rein it in right now, okay? Because they're fishing for your energy. If, unless you're actually there, right there on the ground in Afghanistan while all the troops are pulling out, or right there where the building is collapsed, and that's right there calling your attention physically right in front of you, then that's not what your attention is being asked to be looking at right now. That's the difference. This is the, the separation of worlds that people have talked about. No, it's not going to be a whole separate planet. No. Mm -mm. It's your attention. Your attention is what's going to keep you in this state to notice the real light, 
the gift that's being unwrapped in front of you for you right now. So if your attention is drawn through the fake internet, then you need to get off the internet. Mm -hmm. I want to encourage all of you to, you know, unsubscribe from news stuff, get off the internet, turn your Wi-Fi off at night when you're going to bed, do not get on and scroll through the social media. Stop. You're being influenced away from the real light, the nourishing new earth road that it's that's dissolving into light that you're being asked to get out of the car and go walk towards what happens is if you get sucked into the ai and all of that um it, it's it's plastic it's not real it's a fake reality mm -hmm. that's you sitting with your feet outside the car with the door open but you didn't get out right <laughs> don't do that don't do that Use your attention as if it's the greatest tool you were ever given, because it actually is. Your attention. What needs your attention right now? 100%, including my subconscious, I have my attention on you right now. I'm not being sucked into anything else at all, because I've learned how to strengthen and my focus and attention through meditation, through emotional processing, the stilling of the emotional body, the stilling of the mind, mm -hmm. to know that what needs my attention right now is right in front of me in the moment, and it's part of me. And so sometimes these things will pop up and need your attention. Yeah. Like, like what will happen is the way I know that it needs my attention is because somebody in my close sphere or very few folks will say something. I don't need to go read the news. They'll tell me. Mm -hmm. They'll tell me exactly what my attention needs to be on. So I will gently put it on that. I'll look for the energy that's coming out of it. Maybe it's despair. Maybe it's grief. Maybe it's the loss of children that needs to be examined in me. So if it's in the attention field, if it's in your attention, then it's going to draw stuff out of you. Another trash bag that needs to be healed. Mm -hmm. It'll draw out some new level of light that you could give to the world. Well, I'm going to pray for them. Or I'm going to meditate on, on opening doors for those beautiful souls who need to move on. Or I'm going to put my attention with this group to build a pillar of light to serve these souls who need support right now to get out of their cars. Mm -hmm. Right. But all of it, it's always from the inside out, your attention will get drawn out and it's going to draw something out of you even deeper for you to look at that actually had nothing to do with what you were looking at, <laughs> but it was related in that, it was time now. It was time now for you to reclaim that section of your DNA mm -hmm. and fill it with light. And then you're radiating light out to all these people, to these different situations. And now my field, my radiance, it's available to all of consciousness. I don't have to put my attention on anything anymore for that light to be available to all those different traumatic and difficult things happening in the world right now. That's the skill yeah. that you are creating right now. You're honing that. We're doing it especially now. So swing your legs out of the car, stand up, stretch, put the cell phone away, turn off the Wi-Fi at night especially, get off the social media, Unless it's a very specific time frame that you do that. It's okay to do that. There's nothing wrong with doing that. But don't waste energy because that's exactly what it does. It pulls you straight in and it sucks all your energy out. And then you start thinking that you're separate from everybody. See, that's what those different factors do. They keep you in your personal self. How, how much more personal self can you get than than social media <laughs> yeah. you can't you know it keeps you from your universal self mm -hmm. and it keeps you in this idea 
that that's all real. That's not real. The real internet's right here. It's happening right now with us, with you looking at my eyes, with me looking at all of you with my third eye and some and holding a, a light that is your light. It just draws light out. And that's what radiance does. It encourages light to come out of people and the light it wants to merge because that's source and source will always end up in its own immobile stillness, no matter what, whether you do it consciously now or whenever you check out of this body, mm -hmm. you can do it now though. You don't have to wait. <laughs> that's the good news. Yeah, absolutely. And that's something that we all need to know more and more is like a lot of the things that people like experience when they leave the body, we don't have to wait for that. Now we can start doing that. Now we can start accessing, you know, our, all of our gifts and abilities and who we are on every level. Now we can access source. Now we don't have to wait until we die. You know, it's like that's that, that the whole paradigm is gone. You know, it's, it's not, it's not like that anymore. It's like now we have access to everything. What are we focusing on? Like you said, Where's our attention, like you said, you know, and are we even aware of our light? Are we even aware that we are source? You know, I think some people still are not, but I think most of the people here on these types of calls, they are becoming more and more aware. And it's about, you know, really looking at your thoughts, your feelings, your emotions, and are you present? You know, are you present in your body in this moment right now? Or are you like watching this while you're doing something else? You know, are, are you multitasking? Yeah, and that might be the case, but you know, that that's usually when people are not quite sure that they are source, that's because they're in one of those series of questions. Mm -hmm. So they might be still learning the how. How did I get here? How's all this happening? Or they might be a little bit before where they're like, why? Why is this happening? Why? Why does God let bad things happen to good people? Mm -hmm. A lot of people are still right there. Yeah. That's, that's a big cognitive dissonance point. And in mysticism, when you're navigating consciousness at each triad, when you're merging with these triads, the first three dimensions, the, the fifth, sixth, seventh, the eighth, ninth, or this, the fifth, sixth, and seventh, and then the eighth and ninth and 10th, you know, he moves into these three, these four triads. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're, you're trying to merge with them in consciousness. You're saying, you know, what, what do I need to merge with in order to uh, be at this next level of universal self? That's the question of mysticism. But a lot of folks, they'll find that they hit a, a ceiling when they get to a certain triad of, of dimensions of consciousness, and it'll be a cognitive dissonance. And that's the biggest one. Why would source allow evil and darkness to exist? And most people who are stuck there, um, you know, they've had a lot of framework, uh, of, you know, what I call cozy corners of consciousness that are really comfortable that, that they are really having a hard time leaving. Like God is love and light. Well, no, <laughs> source is not love and light y'all. Mm -hmm. Source, source is light, you're right, but it's not the light that you thought. Mm -hmm. And love is only the movement of source from that immobility. And if you go deep, deep into the dark, which some do, and I'm one of them, and you go to the very ends of it to find out what it's really made of, it's actually light, mm -hmm. but it's not happy. Mm -hmm. Like it's not, it's not the kind of soft, fluffy, cute bunny love light. That that's not what it is. It's light that literally dissolves you. It's that kind of light that dissolves. The personal self cannot survive this. You cannot end up in a cozy corner and say, no, I'm only comfortable looking at love and light. Because mm -hmm. you won't be able to get past that triad 
that cognitive dissonance, that source is actually, yes, light, but it's not cozy, comfortable light. <laughs> it's light that wants to dissolve you from the inside out. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of people will be like, nope, that's not for me. That sucks. It doesn't feel good. I don't want that. I've, I, I've suffered enough. I'd rather be in my cozy corner. And that's okay. Because th that's just their process of getting closer to source in their own way. But for those of us who are here to be New Earth, we're going to be asked to be part of this light. And this one is the light of a thousand suns. Mm -hmm. And it is relentless in that it wants you to be as still and as complete as it is because it is you. <laughs> and it's drawing your attention right now. It wants you to put your attention on it and feel it and feel it dissolve the car and the road and the whole deal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anything that came with it. That's why everyone is feeling apprehensive. There's a feeling of apprehension of feeling like you might fall off the cliff right now, that there's an edge you're walking. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. You are. You're walking on that edge of the universe and the void. And that's where you're going to end up in the highest state you've ever dreamed of. It's for you. It's what you want. If you're there, if you're feeling that edge, that's, that's the state you're being asked to be in. Wow. That's powerful. It's powerful. And it's like, it's such a validation and confirmation sometimes of, you know, the stuff that's going on that you can't even describe or explain. You know, sometimes yes. you don't even, you can't even comprehend like what, it, what exactly is it that's going on right now? Well, and it helps to have a seer around, you know, <laughs> yes. um, my, my essence is luminosity. So I'm just a living flashlight. Mm -hmm. And my essence is that first little baby step that source took when it decided to become me, not Elizabeth. But when it decided to become a facet of consciousness versus the whole shebang, mm -hmm. um, you know, that little baby step away through love, the momentum of love, you know, love is more like a, a law of physics rather than a polarity. There is nothing opposite of love. And so source is immobile. It's still, and in that moment of love, there is the arising of your consciousness and it takes on a mantle, an aspect, a, 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 a facet of reality, because it can't be all of reality all at once. It, it is when you go down deeper beyond that. But once it arises, what is it? Well, for mine, it happens to be what we might call luminosity. And luminosity's activity, once it's discovered, that it is functioning as a person, perhaps, then it's amazed by everything because luminosity can light up any corner mm -hmm. of reality. Shine me right into the darkest corner. Nothing surprises me, it only amazes me. I'm always in a state of wonder because I know now what my essence is, that helps. To get past the personal self, you'll end up coming to the final layer of personal self, and that's your essence. And as you become that, you'll eventually back up beyond that and become source, which is what we would call nerva culpa samadhi, or becoming one with source with no mind, no awareness of any of the fractals, just the whole universe and beyond. And nonetheless, it helps to have people to look at you and and this goes for me especially because being a seer trying to see myself is just kind of ridiculous um to to be seen by the people around you everybody's psychic all of you are psychic you're perfectly functioning psychics you're perfectly functioning empaths and into intuitives it's your nature it's human nature it's built in 
So what can you do to cultivate this? Well, see, see other people. They're not your husband. They are not your child. That is not your cat. <laughs> this is source. Mm -hmm. It's moving through them. It's not separate from you. Start there. Start there. Start with what's right in front of you. This computer is not a computer. <laughs> if you quantumly psychically go into the atoms of this computer, what are you going to see? Source. If you quantumly psychically go into the atoms of any president or leader on this planet, what are you going to find? Source. Source. Mm -hmm. And I call this quantum remote viewing because it is a skill. You do, you do, you can use it. It's, it's actually pretty easy to use once you have somebody show you. But in order to be seen as your true self, you need to be willing to see reality as it truly is naturally around you. So start there if you want to cultivate this feeling of not just being a human in this clunky body this isn't me at all i'm reading this book though and i'm really enjoying it it's a really good book the life of elizabeth it's great <laughs> it's been interesting mm -hmm. for sure i'm not done i'm only halfway through or maybe a third of the way through oh no it's a pretty big book <laughs> but this is this is not you yeah that's that's final question who am i that's where you're gonna live eventually get to that question play with it now it's mm -hmm. still there it's there all the time ask that every day and see what happens you'll be very surprised at what happens absolutely totally agree that's what that's one of the practices i started doing a long time ago when i first started meditating was asking that question who am i who am i who am i exactly. and it's it's amazing what you will discover about yourself. And I think that's when I first discovered Absolutely. that I'm not this physical body, you know? Um, and it was oh, it was so cool? interesting. It's like, wow, it was just blew me away when when that happened. And it's like, I was just waves, waves of energy, just waves, you know? And it's like, oh, but then of course, <laughs> I got back into the body stuff and back into everything else. Um, but it's an in, but ask, ask that question, who am I? And then, you know, stuff is going to come up and then you keep asking, okay, who am I? You know, because you're not any of that. The first stuff that comes up, you're not that. So keep asking. It's a wonderful practice. Um, yes. So, Elizabeth, do you want to take some questions? We have some people with the hands raised yeah. and some stuff in the chat. I don't even know if some of the stuff is questions or just comments <laughs> at this oh, point. I'm reading it and it's mainly comments, but I'm just really excited to see what people are realizing. Um, yeah. You know, and and like Tina realizing that she's here to fully accept what's and you're right on the money, Tina. If anything, you know, gets us through this navigation of consciousness, it's going to be acceptance. Mm -hmm. And you know, you you could say resist nothing or or a positive way of doing it is saying accept everything, accept everything that's showing up, because. That like really um, dense email that your friend might have sent you, you know, dumping, venting, perhaps, right? Or or that mean, nasty one that you got from your mother-in-law or whatever. <laughs> a crazy text that just confused you from so-and-so. Um, they're dense, right? They're structured. Uh, they, they look pretty chaotic. They don't feel very good. But as you accept it, you're like, yeah, okay, this is in the field. I'm putting my attention on it now. I'm going to unravel this email. What are the emotions that are coming up inside of me? Don't worry about their emotions. Yours. What, what's happening when I'm reading this? Oh, I'm like, my throat feels tense. I feel pissed off or my heart feels knotted up. As you welcome that, you're accepting it. You're accepting the email. It begins to unravel, right? And then it starts to make sense. Oh, this is this is their distortion. That's why it came off so weird. It's distorting and it's hitting me. It's hitting my distortion. It's showing me what distortion is in me that I'm not willing to accept my mother-in-law exactly the way she is in her perfection. 
um, you know, or or whatever the weird text from my neighbor. And as you notice that and you accept that inside of you, then that starts to dissolve more and more and more. And then it's revealed the truth. Well, my mother-in-law wrote that email because she's traumatized. She's absolutely traumatized and terrified. That's why. And then compassion. And universal compassion is one of the greatest things we can offer as humans. It's not easily found in this universe. But we, we are really good at it when mm -hmm. we get there. So what questions are coming up? I see Diane is saying, I'm getting major downloads and struggling with yawning and keeping my eyes open. You know, um, it's interesting that you said the 7-7 seven, seven portal. No, no, that's a framework. That's a structure. Um, we, we, could, we could attribute it to all manner of things outside the self. The sun, the planets, the galaxy, numbers, portals. But it's not. It's the inside out. So you're getting downloads. And you're finding yourself struggling with yawning and keeping your eyes open. This is because those downloads are really overwhelming, right? I would focus on overwhelm. When your body is yawning and trying to shut down, the brain is like, this is too much. I can't handle this. Like sometimes I'll be in a session with somebody and they'll fall asleep because the information I'm giving them is so intense that their brain just shut off and they can't handle that. Their brain just is not in the space for that. So you need to be the commander of your situation, Diane. If I were you, I would ask, all right, I'm open to downloads from this time to this time. Dear heart, here's a command. Dear heart, please allow any downloads that I need to receive to be fully embodied during the period that I'm awake and allow myself to fully shut down and rest when it's time to sleep now. And then take a deep breath. Now you've created a program. It's a command program from the heart to all your cells and to the universe at large, which is you, to say, all right, here's the deal. I'm willing and I accept all downloads and these parameters are gonna make it easier for me to navigate. Therefore, this is the program that I need to run in order for me to function. Because if I can't keep my eyes open, then I'm not gonna be able to do my job. I'm not gonna be able to, to do the things I need to do to keep my 3D body alive and to keep my family going. So make some parameters. You know, I used to get blasted with messages at all hours. And, and I thought, well, I'm just going to have to get used to this. This is the way it's going to have to be, I, I guess. I'm just going to have to get used to it. And I used to tell people, I'm, I'm too psychic to, to sleep. I don't sleep very much. I'm too psychic. I constantly see stuff. I'm constantly being asked to navigate reality with my third eye and, and figure stuff out and know things. And no, <laughs> no, 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 no. You're the commander of this reality. You're a creator being. You don't need to be bombarded by anything. You need to stand in your power and say, enough. Look, it might be the ideal time. Great. Then I'm going to spend an hour in meditation and I'm not going to do anything but receive downloads. And that's exactly what's going to happen. No more, no less. Be a creator being. Be finished with what needs to be finished with now. Don't let yourself get stepped on by the forces that be. You are the forces that be. <laughs> you are the numbers. You are Mercury. You are the sun. Mm -hmm. I know that this doesn't make sense in a mental way, but it's not supposed to. Your brain will catch up. 
it's always the last one to catch up anyway <laughs> so yeah act, awesome acclimate to being the one that is in charge of your your reality acclimate to being in charge you're the creator awesome uh, good thank you diane great um so sarah <clears throat> sarah if you want to unmute yourself and happy birthday sarah i think it's sarah's birthday today Yes, I think it was yesterday. Hi. Happy birthday. Hi, it was, it was yesterday, my yesterday. lunar birthday. And uh, in, in Jewish, we say that uh, once you've lived 70 years, you've lived an entire lifetime. So somebody was saying, yeah, I just turned 70. And my friend said, you know, it's the new 40. But in <laughs> Jewish, we, uh, we say that once you're 70, you're, you're living a whole new life. That's why uh, Kirk Douglas had a another bar mitzvah when he turned 83 <laughs> oh wow because it nice. was the new life you know there you go so um i cannot thank you enough for this because i had a lot of upset yesterday because um i'm i'm isolated don't have friends around my kids are in israel and my fellow who's down taking care of his dad in southern california did not even text me happy birthday mm. so you know, so everything you're saying today is an incredible tonic to me because, yeah, this morning I missed a phone call from India because I had it in my head. It was the 17th and the reminders they sent me yesterday didn't come through to this morning after the appointment. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing all this stuff. I had somebody who said, you're, you've been wound up with, with lifetime after lifetime of people trying to keep you quiet. 20 lifetimes of being killed young because you know you spoke uh -huh. up and then so much trauma in this lifetime and after she unwound me i finally had the courage to say to my ex last sunday when he dropped his boy off whom i'm training for bar mitzvah which is weird I, to talk to him about the damage he did me and i've never been able to just say this out to him because our younger daughter is struggling. And I said, you know, she's gone through her stuff. I went through a lot of stuff. Look what I went through at your hands. And it's the first time I've ever been able to say it. And so I was feeling so much upset last night. I couldn't go to sleep. And this morning I got found out I missed this important appointment from India. And then you start talking about upset. And I cannot tell you, probably without weeping, how important this is for me to know. Because I was just having a conversation with somebody who said, have you seen so-and-so? She's not doing great. I said, you know, she doesn't believe COVID is real and she's all wound up in these politics and I can't help her anymore and I had to step away. And then you're talking about getting out of the car. <laughs> you may remember me. I gave you a blessing a few weeks ago. I do remember you. It's great to actually see you. And I was actually telling my fellow that you were one of the people that I connected to most strongly, but I didn't feel like I was capable of having a conversation with you. I understand. <laughs> and, and I'm a pretty grounded, smart, intuitive person. So connecting with you this morning has been, I don't want to take too much time from other people, but has been infinitely important for me because I just keep, I'm in this washing machine, you know, and the cycle never quits. And I just keep going round and round and think I'm very resilient now. And then something happens and it's like, is this for you to remember or for me? And I was dictating some stuff to my kids in Israel and what you were saying got onto the dictation for them. <laughs> <laughs> and I told them, I said, this is straight from her. And yeah, yeah, because they're both going through stuff. Yeah. You're telling me that I, I can't stop help taking care of my children, just like you can't stop taking care of yours, but that I should stop worrying about everybody else because everybody else calls on me constantly for information and empathy and healing. And I finally said, stop, you're not paying me for this. You're just taking my energy. I've got to start something new in my life. And I've been working so hard on it. So in my unwinding, I was told, you know, for three weeks, it was Shamise Daniel, if you know who she is. She said, you've got so much stuff to unwind. Don't really work with anybody else. But I felt very drawn to listen to you. What you said to me is a tremendous help. I'm so glad. And it really heals my heart. Well, Sarah, your heart is this field 
the reason why not worrying about our kids, even though we are still taking care of them. Well, mine are 30. <laughs> yeah. And it's key. I have, I, I have an 18 year old and he just graduated, but I don't worry about him because the field, the field does that. The field takes care of them. And the, the feeling that you're being, you know, sucked dry by people who need your help, just drop all of that. You're right. But the field of your heart will serve them. You don't have to do anything. Your heart's that big. And now, now you've reached your peak, your peak state of power at 71, you know, and this is a field that is so rich. There's no doing in the field. It just does, every, it works you and it works everybody else around you and it nourishes them and it gives them the answers. And sometimes it'll come out of your mouth and sometimes it'll come through your typing and sometimes it's just there. And whether they receive it or not will be their creator being journey. But you're exactly right. You're being asked to be in a state of not doing anything. Here's what it's called. Now, Sarah, you are a place, not a person anymore. You're a place. You're the field of, you're a field of light. That's you. You don't have to do anything. You're a place. You're a place. Play with that. Sit with that. Be that. And you're going to feel so much more comfortable to speak your truth. Finally, your beautiful throat is all <laughs> open now. You're, you're right on track. You're right on track because you know, you're like, I can't do anymore. I got to stop doing. I can't do this whole washing machine shit anymore. I'm going to stop doing. Stop doing. Be a place now. Be a peaceful place. Everything else will come. So I felt calmer last night. I was up at this place we have in Berkeley called the Little Farm. And I go up there. I go somewhere to watch the sunset every day. But I went there because usually the deer and the turkeys and the bunnies and the bats and the hawks congregate. And I can just sit and watch them. But nobody showed up last night. Not a single creature. And I went over to the caged bunnies and I just sat there on the ground. It was 10 o'clock at night, perfectly dark, only person in this huge place and just looked at the bunnies. And I uh, have a book that I haven't published for 10 years. And I know at some point I'm supposed to go out and teach, but get paid for it now because yeah. I just haven't been getting any energy back from the universe. And I have felt a lot of agitation at the same time as these cords are breaking free and these entities have been removed and I'm able to deal with my clutter and move on. And you have, you have uh, given me an understanding that I am peeling back the layers of all this stuff and that it's part of what Shami started last week. And I just want you to know that I treasure you. Thank you, Sarah. Actually, my name is pronounced Sara. It's the Hebrew. Sarah. Oh, very good. Sara. Very nice. Sara means she who struggles and overcomes. Oh, perfect. Well, Elizabeth in the ancient tongue means devoted one. And thank you, Sara. <laughs> yeah, blessings to you and to everyone listening. May we all unwind our fears may our blocks dissolve may we pull back from trying to help people who can't accept our help because they're doing their own work and yes perhaps sometimes they have blinders on but we can't help them remove them we can only remove our own we can only try to find our own light and in so doing that be doing that light will shine out and enlighten the hearts of those who know and love us or only meet us on the street and we stare deep into their eyes and just make that soul communication. May we know that everything that comes to us, every difficulty is a blessing to help us grow and learn and may we take it all with light and may the things that come to us as difficult as they are be seen only as blessings and gifts from the universe to open our hearts and enliven our minds and to open our mouths and song and to get our feet dancing 
blessings so that we can embody joy and through embodying joy, bring the divine down to this earth and help make this transition smoother and easier and more beautiful for everyone. Mm, perfect. Thank you. Beautiful. Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. That was beautiful. Thank you. Awesome. Wow. Um, uh, Marielle, you've had your hand raised for a while. Hello, hello. Uh, yes. Hi. Um, hi, Elizabeth. I'm a regular on the Ala Russ program. Awesome. And um, I got uh, two readings, one saying that I had a deep, deep, deep wound that I had to heal. Mm. And another one saying that uh, from another guest that I'd been hoodooed. So I had to Google that mm -hmm. <laughs> to find out. So Great. they gave me some clearings, but it's still in the back of my mind. You know, I'm, I'm a bit worried about these. Yeah. Okay. The, inner, the inner wound, I don't know how to heal it. Yeah. So a oh, deep wound like that, it traditionally is called a samskara. And it's going to, a samskara is going to show up often in your life. So here's a good example, like from myself, um, fear of, of darkness, fear of evil, um, fear of the demonic and fear that I will become influenced by darkness and evil and not know it. Right. That, that is something that has haunted me throughout my life and it's shown up as demonic attacks and all kinds of you know me versus them situations with good and evil well to end a samskara you need to look at your life not any other life just this one and say well what's the biggest you know traumas that i faced and what do they have in common and so those are going to be those are going to give you a clue of what is your wound right and then you need to understand that you need to merge with this wound, my fear of evil, okay? How do I fix that problem? Well, I know it sounds odd, but you got to merge with evil. You got to say, I'm not afraid of hoodoo or voodoo or anything like that or dark magic, or maybe I am afraid of it. And if it is something that's scaring you or making you worry, then it's leaking your energy just like it was made for. So you need to face your fear. If you want to get higher faster, if you want to be in a higher state of consciousness, if you want to become a field of light and not so much a human who's worried about hoodoo or voodoo, uh, then you need to be willing to face your fear. When you follow your fear, you'll get higher faster. So all you have to do right now is say, well, how did it make me feel? to know that I have a deep wound? How did it make me feel to know that I had some hoodoo on me? It's a very specific type of dark magic, right? And how did, it, how did it really make me feel? Well, it made me feel like, first off, really worried. It made me feel creeped out because like, who the heck wants to mess with me right now? And it made me, you know, go into your feelings. Notice how you feel about a deep wound. Go into your body and say, well, where in my body is this feeling showing up? Well, my heart feels like kind of tensed up and I want to protect myself from anybody that's going to like do weird voodoo stuff to me, right? Then you say, okay, I'm going to welcome being in a protective state. I'm going to welcome feeling paranoid. I'm going to welcome feeling sad that I have a deep, deep wound, and you keep going. Those are the little baby steps. That's all you got to do. And eventually it's going to be like, wow, you know, this stuff doesn't bother me anymore. All these demonic beings, they don't bother me anymore. Yeah, they're around. Yeah, they come around. Sure, definitely. For me, yeah, definitely. They show up and I'm like, hi, how are you? Nice to see you. Welcome. Because... I'm not afraid of them anymore. I know exactly what they're made of because I processed 
the separation I had between me and black magic or me and the demons. <laughs> and now the demons, they show up and they're, and I'm like, hi, you're welcome here. I only have love for you. I know exactly what you're made of. And they're like, oh crap. And they leave because they don't, <laughs> I, I got nothing for them except oh, massive loads of love. And they just can't stand that. That's not what they came for. So, you know, same with voodoo or dark magic. If, if you face this energetic or this wound or this thing that's coming after you and you're like, hi, hey, hoodoo, I'm going to go discover all about you. You're, you must be super interesting because you scared the holy moly out of me. That's the attitude you take. And it ends all separation and it ends any power that these things have over you. And then you stand in your power and you'll feel lighter and brighter and you'll feel healed and very capable of managing any wound. Okay, that's exactly what you need to do. You're right on track. That's not an easy one. <laughs> <laughs> oh no no this experiment wasn't built to be easy but you you are truly powerful if you're here right now talking to all of us that's who you are you're especially incredible. since it's 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 going to be on youtube <laughs> oh yeah sure it doesn't matter none of that there isn't any darkness or any difficulty or any trauma or any evil that will ever, ever usurp the level of consciousness that is literally creating you right now. You are all of that. Eventually, when you back into your true self, which is easier and easier every day, as we unwrap our present that we just got, we're still trying to figure out what it is. But it's going to get easier and easier for you to realize this that you don't have to worry. That worry is uh, something that you created as a creator being in order to learn. And then you'll discover that, hey, you created the hoodoo. You're gonna discover that. I created the demonic presence that used to torture me. I did that so I could be here now and show everybody how to manage it. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to talk about any of it. You're going to end up in that state, but take that, just be interested in it. Be curious. Just notice how it makes you feel and go from there. And keep welcoming it, each layer of it. Go, go look up hoodoo and really understand it and where it came from. And it's history, because there's something juicy there for you. That's why it came into your awareness, so that you can discover more and then welcome it. And it, it, your mind's going to get in the way. So this is your key. Make sure you begin to still your mind more so that your mind doesn't keep blocking you and put blinders on and saying, no, you can't merge with this. Yes, you can. You can merge with anything. You can merge with anything. And then it doesn't have power over you. That's all. That's all you're trying to do. You're not trying to end all hoodoo or end all demonic entities in the universe. No. You're here to end its power over you as a sovereign being of creation. That's all. It's that, it's that simple. Keep it in that parameter and you'll get where you want to go, which is feeling free of all your pain and the end of suffering. Okay. Give it a try. Awesome. Thank you, Maria. And you might want to look at um, Elizabeth's package since you've never worked with her before, I don't think. So you might want to look at the package that Elizabeth has for us. And then you can see how that is going to also help you to really take a look at those things and move forward. Okay. We'll talk about that in, in a minute. Um, Pat, sorry, I missed you yesterday. You want to unmute yourself? Sure, that's okay. I understand. It's all perfect. <laughs> I'm learning that. I surrender to 
exactly what is occurring because it's all perfect. Mm -hmm. that's the I'm mentioning. feeling energy go through my whole body. I guess that's the clarity I received, you know. <laughs> but I want to thank you, Elizabeth, for all your wisdom, your wonderful energy. And, and yes, I'm experiencing what you're, what you're speaking about today. It's very powerful what we're going through. Each day is a new journey. And it's like I'm learning new ways of looking at things, new clarity, new understandings about realities, myself and other people. It's, it's, it's just a continual journey. It goes on and on and on. There is no end. There is no end. And uh, I've, I've, I've been guided to do some breath work, slow breath work. And I woke up in this golden plasma energy of love. It was so beautiful in bed this morning. It was just wonderful to feel that. Absolutely. And, and it's creative. Be creative. I'm getting in. Be creative. Yeah, be creative. Yeah. Yeah. My mind was going crazy a little bit last night. And I, I, I let it all out. And then I got in. Do some breath work. Be creative and trust. You know, surrender to the process. Yeah, you're describing perfection. And I like that because you're actually um, taking a certain vantage point in the dimensions when you say oh, everything is perfect. Mm -hmm. And it used to drive me crazy when all my yeah. friends on the West Coast would say, it's all good. And I'm like, no, it's not. It's not <laughs> Even though it doesn't feel that way. I understand. <laughs> totally. <laughs> when you get that high and you're backing up, right? Yeah. So I'm kind of answering multiple situations at once right now. When you're backing up, you begin to realize that, that the diamond that has facets, right? That each of those facets was cut perfectly, right? Mm -hmm. And then you're like, and I'm one of those facets. And then you back up even more and you see all the facets, but from the inside of the diamond, mm -hmm. right? And you're almost there to that still point. That's the 11th dimension. And when you're looking at reality from that dimension, every single thing is absolutely perfect. Yes. And the, the cognitive dissonance of like, well, you know, how, how can God let bad things happen? It all disappears. Mm -hmm because it ends up showing, revealing itself as truly perfect. Yes. Well, of course I had to have demons attack me all my childhood. Mm -hmm. That was perfect. It was exactly perfect for me to be able to get to this moment and then the moments that will come mm -hmm. that, that are written. I, I say I'm reading the book of Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, that book got written for sure at the beginning. When was the beginning? Well, when you go to the void, Pat, and this is the message I have for you. Okay. And, and for others here. When you go to the void, which is the space between universes, mm -hmm. you're, you're at the vantage point of perfection. You've realized now that the whole thing, everything in the universe, all time is absolutely, utterly perfect. Then that's your chance to step out of the universe. You can't step out of the universe to look at the multiverse mm -hmm. and, and see what the void is really made of until you're able to perceive fully that everything's perfect. Then you merge with the universe. Okay. When you go into another level of stillness, the center of the diamond, and you're, you even step outside the whole diamond and where it was made, you end up in the space between spaces then the multiverse looks like any universe. It, there's as many universes as there are stars in the sky. Yes, I believe that, yeah. And then you see this other thing, this light, and it has no source. Mm. And I'm, I'm aware of this only because I kind of get thrown into these situations <laughs> but to figure it out where am i what am i looking at <laughs> um, but i'm seeing you with my third eye and and i see this person who's backing into that center of the the diamond 
but I wanted to give you a clue of where you're at, why you do believe now that everything's perfect, you know, and, and everyone is going to get to experience that. All of you can. This is not um, mm -hmm. rocket science at all. No, not at all. It's much simpler than that. Yes. It's literally that simple. So anybody, anybody can get to this state. And many, many do, even without help. There's all these amazing people out there who have reached this state and they they got there by themselves. That's how amazing all of you are. So the fact that we all get this chance to talk about it and share it and navigate it, well, that's gonna just give us a big burst forth of where to go. So there is no beginning. There isn't a beginning. Now, that's what's called the infinite. And no, your brain can't totally your, your brain can't handle it. Yes, right. Let it, let it override your brain and then you'll feel it. You'll feel it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I thank you so much. I'm honored to feel this wonderful energy with, with everyone. I love Alara and and it's just wonderful to be here. And each day is a new new journey. Some days are easier than others because I experience things physically, off balance stuff, you know, all that kind of stuff. And uh, so it's just a walk. I just, I'll just keep stepping in the boots. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> keep reading the book of Pat. <laughs> Thank, you, Ashley. Thank you, Pat. That was beautiful. Thank you. I honor all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Much love. All right. We're going to take one more quick question from Sherry. Sherry's had her raise for a long time. I think he even wrote something in the chat. I'm not sure, Sherry, but I'm not going to go back and find it now. So <laughs> hello. Hi, Sherry. Hi. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi, Alara. Um, Hi. That was that was beautiful. Um, um, I'm not even sure what to say after that. That was just beautiful. <laughs> I just threw you out into the void. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and maybe other people can relate to I'm just every day is a new day. Um, in terms of my physical body, I just wake up with 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 aches and pains and um, some days more than others. And I know there's lots going on. And I am doing my best to um, fully accept and, and go into the pain. Um, I'm just feeling like I'm missing something and I'm, you know, I'm doing the herbs and I got you covered. Let me give oh, you thank a you. <laughs> As I get better and better at seeing now I don't even need anybody to say anything yet. So that's kind of cool. Um, the, the key here is I want you to actually look at your pain. Okay, so so this is for everybody because I, I suffer with a chronic condition called Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Don't look it up. It's really depressing. Um, <laughs> you'll be shocked at how much pain people can really live in, right? Um, but the, the, so pain, let me give you an example. Um, I dislocate all my joints in my body regularly. So, so that's part of my condition. So um, like today, this particular knuckle was giving me trouble, right? And what do, what do we do about this? This turns into a lifestyle, but first you need to do it really mentally, okay? Go into psychically remote view. It's called quantum remote view. Go into, make yourself tiny and go into the spot in your body that hurts, okay? So if I go into if I go into my knuckle, what am I going to see? Well, you're going to see all sorts of things. Don't try to control it. That's the key. Don't try to control it. Just imagine yourself being there inside the part of your body that hurts. Notice what you see. You might see lots of things. You might see colors. You might see knots. You might see like a cave. Some people will see like a traumatized childhood part of their life or an adult trauma. They might see all sorts of things. It's just revealing to you the source of the pain. So for me, when I go into my knuckle, I notice uh, this really tense energy that's that looks like two big red hooks like this, right? I and mean, they just go like this. Does that mean anything? Well, maybe, but it doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna ask the next question. Well, how does that feel? How does this red hook energy feel? Okay, well, it feels really hot. And it feels um, 
like I'm going to suddenly get torn apart, kind of like my knuckle getting dislocated, right? So I'm going to welcome that feeling. Okay, I welcome that. It's okay. I, I can handle the whole being torn apart feeling. No problem. So we just welcome that. And it doesn't feel good. No, it doesn't feel good. But as you go into it, it starts to feel less and less and less difficult to manage. And then you're going to see light. At the end of whatever process it is that you're trying to notice in your hip or your joint or your head or whatever part of your body, right? You've put your consciousness there. You're looking at it. You're welcoming the more nuanced parts of that pain. It's always going to look like light, some kind of light. It might have a color. I did a process with somebody who had a, a torn hamstring, right? And I said, what color is the light that you just unbraided out of your hamstring? And she said, well, I see this green light. I'm like, great. Now take that green light, this is the next step. Then take the light, it might be white, it might be neutral, it might be gold or green or red or whatever. And you're gonna take that light, you're gonna say, all right, light, maybe you're still in that part of your body. All right, light, what do you wanna do now? Because all pain ever was and ever is and ever will be, Sherry, is light. And now I can live in a state where this is happening constantly because I've done it enough every single day, all day long. Now I live in a state where I'm turning my pain into pure light. So my field that nourishes all these people and all these situations out in the world and in the universe, it's so full of light because of my pain. My pain nourishes the field of light. My pain heals people. It's not pain. It's light. It's light that got bound up in a situation, in a trauma, in some kind of activity, whatever. It got bound up and it needed to be freed. So now I do this quite quickly. Oh, yes, my hands hurt. Ah, uh, yeah, well, I know what that is because I go immediately now right into the light and it can become anything. So give that a try, but take the light and then turn it into something. Practice with it. Give it away as a gift to one of your friends. M maybe turn it into a pretty crystal dolphin and hand it off. <laughs> friend, right? Or you give it to yourself as a gift. All right, I'm gonna turn this into a gift of, I wanna be more open right now. Okay, I'm gonna give this light to myself as a gift. I wanna be more open. This pain is gonna help me become open. Use it whatever way you wish. And then eventually, now I just turn it into the field of light that helps to elevate consciousness and heal humanity, which is my job. That's the job I came to do. So you can do this too. Turn your pain into light, go into it, open it up, get to know it, look at it, see it for what it really is, and then turn it into something really cool. And you'll see your pain will lessen every day a little more. And now I don't experience pain at all the way I used to whatsoever. I've completely rewired my experience of pain. So I hope this will help all of you. Wow. Namaste, Elizabeth, that I will. Um, thank you. That, you're incredible. Thank you, Sherry. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Sherry. That was great. Thank you, Alara. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you. That was so helpful. I was doing the process as we were, um, as Elizabeth was talking about it, I was doing it with myself on my neck, you know, so it was like, yes. I was seeing the colors and then I, I saw it changing and I mean, already I'm like not feeling as tense. My neck is not feeling as tense. There's less pain. So it's like, awesome. Like that was like two minutes, you know, but I went with it, you know, and it's like, okay, let's look at this. So I, I'm going to do it again when I'm not doing this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So I can really focus on it. It just becomes something that you become. You become that process and you don't have to think about it anymore. Yeah. I'm very glad it helped your neck. 
Yes, thank you. It was, yeah, it's awesome. I feel so much better. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so I know there might still be some questions in the chat, but I want to take a few minutes and talk about the package that Elizabeth has for us this time. Um, so some of you may have already looked at it. And for those of you who have not, it is available at alara.at forward slash show forward slash Elizabeth seven. I'm going to put that in the chat as well. Um, so Elizabeth, let's talk about, let's talk about it. So great. <laughs> so I've been calling, I call this the spiritual scientists tool set. And I wanted to make it all instant access for you. So you can listen to it over and over again. Um, but I put together a lot of different trainings that I found over the years to be some of the most useful into this big juicy package. It's pretty packed full. So you really could be busy with this for the next six months until our next big, huge shift. Um, the first class is creating and maintaining spiritual power. It's a special mysticism training that goes deeper into the topics we were talking about, but giving you a lifestyle how to create and maintain this light that we're talking about, this power, this power. And then the second class, which we just kind of alluded to, is quantum remote viewing training. I take you on this really cool journey. I'm going to show you that you are a perfectly functioning psychic and that you can go anywhere. And I take you on that journey to show you what it's all about, how to do that. And then once you do this one, you might like to do it more than once. You'll feel more confident dealing with pain, for example, because you'll be able to easily go in and see what you need to see without worrying about if you're seeing it right or not. The third piece is the Three Minds Workshop and ebook, The Three Brains, the Mind, the Heart, and the Gut. This workshop talks about how to heal these three brains. If your brain mind gets in the way and starts putting blinders on, like Sara mentioned, or if your brain mind tries to question you at every move and you're tired of it, then let's fix the problem. If you're deeply traumatized and you have voices in your mind that really aren't you, then let's deal with the issue. I wanna show you how. And then of course, anything with the heart and the gut mind as well. There's other ways that they function for you and you wanna know how because that helps you to navigate your reality right now. You're in a human body. So it's three, two hour long classes and an ebook that goes along with it for that piece. Then we have a whole other training, another training, the full body oracle training, how to use those three brains and more to make discerning decisions, the little decisions and the big ones. You need the same skill. You got to use your body, but your body is your oracle. Your body is your oracle. I want to show you how to turn it into your oracle so you can keep making discerning decisions. I'm going to give you a secret. You don't need the tarot cards or the divinations or the pendulum. You don't need them. You need the body. And I'm going to help you to fully embrace that. The next training is empaths and entities. We mentioned entities. I've had a lot of dealings with them, obviously. Uh, many, many different types, many thousands of kinds of entities of all sorts. And the empaths out there, all of you who can feel so much, especially feeling when people are being oppressed or even worse, possessed, right? What do you do? How do you manage this? How do we deal with entities that don't have our sovereignty in mind? I want to show you how to do that and to do it with grace and to do it easily. You don't even have to be at peak performance to be able to manage and navigate from here and end that for and against or us and them problem that keep that we keep facing. Then there's a four hour long class I added in. You're gonna use that quantum remote viewing, but to heal infectious disease. Everything that we think about infectious disease from a Western standpoint isn't terribly useful. <laughs> I love Western medicine. It's definitely helped me in many, many ways, but I want to show you what the real meaning of infectious disease is. And I'll give you a hint. It's emotional. It has to do 
with emotion. And we're gonna help heal any kind of issue around that. No, it's not medical advice. It's a specific skill that I wanna show you that you can use that's helped myself create incredible miracles for myself and my own healing and of course others. But for me alone, it was big. It was a huge deal to be able to understand, hey, I have access to the whole bacteria world and the virus world and the, this world that seems foreign that I can't access. No, you have access to it. Let me show you how, and let me show you how to get the info you need so you can heal. Then we have a couple of other classes that are gonna be helpful. I hear people say that they worry, especially about the future, right? Or about our kids or about our loved ones. I also hear a lot of people worry that the things that came and happened in the past that they might happen again. This is actually a problem with time. So let me help you manage and navigate time. It's gonna blow your idea up about what time is and that's okay, but I wanna give you back the time you have so you can feel like Pat and Sherry where every day is freaking amazing and you can't wait for it to continue to get started each moment. And then we have equations for enlightenment. There's some patterns out there, some handy equations to use that will help you and that support you. They're available to you as you continue your spiritual scientist journey, wondering who you are. I wanna help you answer all that. And then lastly, anybody who signs up with anything I do, you get to subscribe a free subscription to the monthly community calls I do at the end of each month. And they help to get you from the personal experience that we're having to the universal one. And then when we get there, we use our nice high state to build a pillar of light for whatever issue is in our attention at the time. And so that's the wonderful gift we can give back is continuing to create radiant pillars of light out there that serve this constant journey we're going on to becoming new earth. And that's the package I'm very happy to share today. Oh, beautiful, Elizabeth. And there's so many wonderful topics, wonderful content, wonderful wisdom to assist all of you in your next steps as you're, you know, whether you're sitting in the car, whether you're just getting out of the car now, or whether you're taking that next step. And now these packages are available in one, two, and three part payment plans to assist you at this time, because I know some people are having some challenges. So it's available for you in those three payment plans as well. And the thing is with these with these programs, it's like a lot of them are building on each other, right? So they're building on each other. So as you as you you know start listening to one or, or watching or listening to one, then the next one gives you even more information and guidance and wisdom, and, and then you keep going. And at the same time, you're actually implementing what you're learning, right? So it's not just you know passive learning; it's actually experiential and practical, and you know you're moving with it you know moving forward with it so thank you elizabeth very helpful and like diane said in the chat she said i have some of these courses already and they really helped me to clear some heavy deep stuff you know awesome that's great and they will continue right so as you you know if you have more stuff coming up you can always go back and listen to them again and they will help clear up even more stuff yes right? it's a lifestyle yeah, it's a uh, that this package is a lifestyle. I call myself a spiritual scientist, but it's actually not a label. It's a lifestyle, mm -hmm. and I, I want to show you this. And it's it's based in science, but it's also based in mysticism and and training that I've received over the past decades. So I've been able to compile it all into something that can make sense because that's one of the gifts I have as, as luminosity to be able to make sense of these things and make it easier, more human. Because gosh, that's why I, I'm here. Mm -hmm. I'm in love with humanity. And I see what, what, we're, what we are and what we're becoming. And that's the goal. And, and if that's something that appeals to you, I've got your back. 
Beautiful. I love that. And like Sarah says, <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing. So I swore I wouldn't buy another package for a while, but I think I'm supposed to do this one and study with you, Elizabeth. And the Hebrew equivalent of your name is Elisheva. Hopefully I'm saying Ooh, that's that right. Pretty. I like that. I'm, I'm <laughs> assuming that's how you say it. All right. Beautiful. Yeah, Thank you. Well, beautiful. That's beautiful. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> it's it's Elisheva. Elisheva. Beautiful. Thank you. Ooh, I, that's even good. better. I like that even better. Elisheva. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of figured Elisheva was not right. Like, no. Yeah. Awesome. Hebrew, not Indian. Yeah. 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 Right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Sarah. That's beautiful. Um, and Sherry says, thank you. I feel lighter already. Awesome. Good. Good, good, good. And Viera says, thank you, Elizabeth. Very helpful. Happy anniversary. So hopefully you do get a chance to celebrate with you know your husband <laughs> and enjoy the day right thank you we will yeah good awesome um all right anything else you want to share with us before we go yeah you know when we get there this new earth thing it's it's a state of consciousness right i want you to know that that we have of course an another goal in mind it's a selfless service goal. And as we move towards it, I'm literally doing a seeing right now, so that's why my eyes are shut. <laughs> um, as we move towards it, you're gonna feel everyone else. You're gonna feel other people who got to this place in time and space and consciousness. And at that moment, then you'll say, okay, now it's time for us to simply be together, right? Mm -hmm. And just like I was encouraging all of you to be right now, be a, be a place. And as you become a place, that field gets really, really big. Your field will get really big and it'll merge with all the other fields of the people who are doing the being as well. They're becoming more still. These fields of light will merge. And this is going to have an electromagnetic effect on the earth. So if anyone has been worried about solar flares or mini novas or apocalypses or whatever this is the cool part our consciousness in a state of being new earth literally supports and bolsters the electromagnetic field of earth herself our mother and we will get to finally give back to gaia what she has been waiting for us to do this she has helped us to get to this point because we are her children our embodiments come from and always go back home to gaia and she has been willing to be the seat of the experiment in consciousness that's one of the grandest ever taken part in and we'll get to give back to her and all the species of the earth by helping to protect the earth during whatever might come forth. That's one of the wonderful things we can look forward to. So even if you didn't come for the humans, not everybody has. You came for earth at least usually <laughs> because it's so beautiful here so wonderful here this is the heart of the universe literally i want you to discern that for yourself notice it in your heart when i say gaia is the heart of the universe you'll feel it in your heart that it's true and we'll be able to give back so if that is what motivates you to get out of the car do it because that's where we're headed that's what's coming mm. Beautiful. Thank you. I love that. And yes, when you said that Gaia is the heart of the universe, I really felt that in my heart. It was such a nice light feeling, light, but also like truth, you know, truth. So beautiful. Thank you. We're so blessed to be yes. together. Thank you, Alara, for today. Thanks for spending this extra 10 minutes or 20 minutes with us. <laughs> It's been great. It's been wonderful. I always love talking with you and we always have such a wonderful conversation, you know, so it's like, it's, yeah, it's so enlightening, eye-opening, but also very expanding. And, and it's, it's helpful too, to see that 
you know, so many of us are going through the same process. So we're not alone. We're not crazy. It is happening. And then, you know, it's like, all right, let's, let's all, we're all going together, you know, as a soul tribe, right? We're all going together as a soul family. And so let's all get out of the car, take a deep breath, you, you know, really enjoy it. And then take that next step, wherever that takes you. It's, it's a beautiful time and place that we're in right now. And it's very exciting. And like you said, we've never been here before. We've never been here before. So it's powerful. So uh, yeah, <laughs> Renata says goosebumps all throughout the show, right? Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you everyone for all of your questions, comments and feedback in the chat as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And again, Elizabeth, it's so wonderful to, to have you on back on the show. I'm so glad that you're doing well. And I know we haven't uh, touched base, but everything is good. Everything is good. I'm Just glad to hear it. I love you. Thank you. I love you too. Everything is wonderful. It's going great. And I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful for your love and support and your kindness and generosity. So thank you. All right, everyone, until next time, may you continue to be blessed with an abundance of joy, peace, love, happiness, prosperity, and radiant health. Sending you all much love and blessings always. Bye for now. God bless you. Thank you. Namaste. Bye-bye. Bye, Bye, everyone. Namaste. Namaste, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone.